Ah, uh, what a lad. Now, we have been lucky enough to be joined by some incredible sportsmen and some absolute lads on the What a Lad podcast so far. But today we have gone to a whole nother level with one of the most gifted blackjack players this generation has ever seen. He's burning the bookies heavily and bringing along over one million people with him on his journey of turning $1,500 into a milli. He's definitely New Zealand's favourite lad right now. He's definitely the world's favourite lad right now. It is, of course, the great Tim Naki. Welcome, mate. James, how are you, mate? Jeez, I don't know if I'd be putting me up there in that upper echelon with uh, professional athletes <laughs> and the likes, but uh, oh, what a ride we're on. <laughs> mate, what an absolute ride you are on, mate. And now you're in Vegas. You're coming to me from Vegas. Um, special times for you, mate. It is, yeah. So we touched down here this morning. Um, no spoiler alerts. I have done today's hand um, on the felt, so that'll be set to go up. Probably not long after you and I have this chat, actually. Um, but uh, yeah, we've well, got a couple of days throwing them down live on the felt here, and then um, then move on. I want to move on to New Orleans. Then looking forward to actually getting back to NZ in about. Uh, Oh, a week now, I guess. Oh, the return of the king. Jeez, there's going to be some welcome party for you when you get back to New Zealand Public shores. Enemy number one with the female uh, population of New Zealand, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> but what a journey you've been on, eh? Like the last sort of, what is it, 72 days in particular. It's crazy. Um, it's mad. Yeah, how do you look back at it? Um, just nonsensical, uh, like almost, I don't know, like a dream really to be cliche, but... Um, I started it just first of February, whatever. I'd seen this guy Chewy, um, if I can dive into it and you don't mind. I saw this guy Chewy, he's a Yank, um, and he was filming himself. He was doing walking one inch for every Instagram follower he had every day. I was like, oh, that's kind of a good idea, but I'm probably not going to do something quite as wholesome as that. And so I kind of piggybacked that and I was like, oh, what hobbies do you have, Tim? Oh, I don't mind a pun. <laughs> so I found something more aligned to that and um, took it off. And just randomly on February 1st, I was like, oh, well, this is a good day to fire it up. In my head was like, internet's a pretty wild thing. Shit goes viral. I don't like the word viral, but things take off. Maybe, maybe after a bit of time, could get to a 50k and i'd find myself doing a uh, a five thousand dollar blackjack hand and we found found ourselves here after about eight days <laughs> i think so it's been i've had to work it all out on the fly uh, um yeah it's still there's going to come a time where i officially shut it all down um i'll still do i'll be doing other things but like this official series will will, will stop and i'll just have to look back and be like what the <laughs> what, happened? what actually happened <laughs> mate the whole world has gone on this journey with you too eh? it's incredible how quickly it's all it growing is. followers just increased by what hundred thousand every couple of days it's it's literally insane <sighs> It's we got a lot of closet degenerates out there, James. They just uh, <laughs> they just keep on pouring in. A lot of athletes too, may I had. I could imagine a lot of them just <laughs> living their punting dreams through you. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Hey, I'm happy if people can live vicariously through me and not spend money themselves. Well, shit. Um, um, it's a double double service. I'm having some fun myself and and keeping others from uh, from getting silly on it. So. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, that, that's one thing you've done really well throughout the whole journey. I I feel is you've always been pretty honest with how shit punting is uh, for most people or you're just on some incredible lucky run at the moment, which um, as you've said yourself, isn't the case ever really. No, because like I've, I've grew up in a horse racing family and stuff. And so I've been punting ponies like from, from a young age and I guess that's deviated into other forms of gambling. Um, but yeah, it's just, certainly I was saying the other day, like if you stacked up, if you had tally charted all my winning bets versus my <laughs> losing bets, it would be embarrassingly weighted. I would probably quit tomorrow if I was to see that chart <laughs> actually. But what people are seeing is a very small snippet of, of a man's um, gambling. And I still have plenty of losses on other facets of horses or whatever. But for some reason, doing one hand of blackjack has worked. I don't know why it is just dumb luck. People ask me like, oh, what's the secret to it? You secret like, like the cards come out <laughs> as the cards come out like you can know how to play like a blackjack like what's the best way to play a hand statistically but it's just dumb luck <laughs> <laughs> mate you, you're 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 gifted you've got a lot of luck <laughs> oh, at the moment at the moment yeah Too we fast. could be doing this in five days times and, and you've got nothing left <laughs> oh, i could be i could be on the street with me buddy with me head out begging for sure <laughs> No, I wouldn't let it get there. Yeah, you, you, well, you mentioned your um your upbringing a, around um the ponies and um punting at an early age. Keen to hear a little bit more about the great man's upbringing. Understand it was in the mighty Naki, one of the best places in in the country. Absolutely, South Taranaki, a uh, tiny little spot just between Harwater and Partia. 
Um, yeah, like a dairy farming family, but uh, like granddad, my, my dad's father um, always had race horses, and then dad and all the siblings um, have always had you know race horses all the way through. They all did, show, or most of them did show jumping on the way up, and um, some of them now it's still deeply ingrained to, to into horse racing um, today. So I kind of didn't have much option. It was uh, horses or cows, <laughs> and I kind of the only two paths in life I've really taken, except for this now random one where um, I guess I'm still punting, but not horses, not cows, but yeah. Crazy, eh? So what age did your punting, I guess, addiction start? <laughs> uh, well, I suppose I've been pretty steadily, like, because I my first job, official job, outside of the slave labor, the old man had us doing on the farm for free, was um, had a previous ferrier. <laughs> And so oh, I was yeah. like, I was in the horse racing industry. So like, even then, like all of a sudden you've got a real steady, you know, like, finally get a steady wage and you're, and you're ingrained in it. You, you, you know, one ear on the job and one ear listening to what the trainers are saying about a few upcoming runners. And so it, it, it doesn't help a man in my position who loves a punt. You, you hear a thing or two about a thing or two and, and I got to be honest, they were wrong more often than they, than they were right. The trainers, <laughs> to be honest, to be honest. <laughs> they always are. Uh, had, had a little bit of luck along the way, but. Yeah, they, they were all real good to me, and I guess it it, it kicked off there. But there was a—I probably shouldn't say it. I definitely shouldn't say it. But there was a um, there was always a, a lovely lady at the um, at the Harvard race course, and a, f- a few lads and myself would uh, on school days from time to time we'd pinch our pinch our dad's suits and suit, suit up, up and, and, and end the races on a school day, day and take our lunch money and. Um, for some reason, there were some of the old ladies. Maybe they just think, yeah, I don't know. That uh, that uh, that let us punt at the tote, you know, even though we weren't uh, technically we were, we were operating a grey area. I don't know how we didn't look like pups because we we're <laughs> s- swimming in our dad's suits, but uh, I, think <laughs> I think they, they just appreciated the the, the intent, intent and the attempt. So, so they let us have a little little cheeky dabble when I was sort of sixteen, seventeen. No names. I couldn't <laughs> even remember them if I wanted to. <laughs> Mate, how good is that at the Howard of race track? <laughs> yeah, yeah. God, we used to have some fun. And apparently you're you're quite good on the footy scene too, by all accounts. We winger outside back, terrible. Ca- carried hard at fullback, <laughs> carried hard, hopeless. <laughs> I used to love my footy. Um, it just it got to a stage where I really loved the what I was doing in the um at that stage of the equestrian scene, show jumping. I um as much as I loved horse racing at the time, I uh, I kind of wanted to go to the Olympics, but it was a dream that didn't pan out. I mean, originally I wanted to be a jockey because I was like, I think in fourth form, like. 14, yeah, 14 years old or something, I would have been like 36, 37 kilos, like dri- dripping wet. I was a tiny lad, like a, a tiny, tiny lad, and then had a better growth spurt. I'm still not a, a big bloke now, but just got too big to be a jockey. So um, that dream becomes sort of show jumping, and then that didn't, you know, that didn't work out as it as it was. But And, and now here I am, so, so far <laughs> removed away from a, the hoity-toity show jumping scene. <laughs> degenerate punting on the regular. Oh, God. Can you punt on show jumping? I don't believe so. No, no, I, I don't think so. Mate, you would have some insight. That could be your next adventure. Jeez, if you can, someone <laughs> let me know. Someone send me the book. If, you, if there is a way, I'd love to know. So then, did you end up on the dairy farm in the end? Yeah. So I was um, before uh, before I headed off and moved over to Canada with the missus. I was on the dairy farm. Yeah, I was. Uh, I, sh- I was shoeing horses. Had my own business for a number of years, and then um, had a bit of a bad injury, which kind of put pay to that um they say farrier's strong back weak mind but unfortunately after a while i didn't have either <laughs> thanks to a few injuries so ended up back on the dairy farm for a bit and um just like got that covid cabin fever like a lot of the rest of the world did yeah and i don't know wanted a change so holidayed in uh canada post covid lockdowns and then the missus and i like five days and we're loving it so much just pulled the trigger on on moving and got went back home and sold up the cows and stuff and just thought oh we'll, we'll see how long we can uh stay afloat abroad with what yeah i mean who would have thought blackjack would come to save the day and extend it a little bit longer i would not recommend anyone on this earth tries tries to make money or to change their circumstances doing it was that your what did you have lined up over there any income or was that genuinely the plan did you actually plan this out a little bit we were like we'd planned like we sort of knew with what we had like we could we could see things out for like uh two years oh, and yeah. whatnot a little bit of land like that i'd lease back to my parents um who use it in their dairy farming operation back home but nothing like major major so yeah pretty much just after we sold up we're like oh we know we can get here you know get along for 
X amount of time if we're reasonable with what we're doing. And um, like this is honestly, it's it's absolutely, this has changed everything because um, not only like the blackjack profit's incredible, like unreal, I, I should just shut it down now, <laughs> but I've managed to forge a really good partnership with a, a, um, with a casino slash sports book to be announced actually any day now when just getting the last few ducks in a row. So I'll actually be able to, um, I'll have a revenue stream sort of coming out of it going forward. And yeah, it's, it's for some reason, yeah, she, she's all working out for now. She's, it's all is right. It what? How good is that? So this partnership, what is that going to look like? <sighs> There's still a few things to work out with it, but the main thing is like, I will actually be able to create a, not a steady, steady revenue stream, but like it, it'll be able to make some money off it to to go forward and and keep living living abroad while we can. Eventually, we still want to end up back in New Zealand and somewhere rural. I think, but I, when that is now, I, I'm I'm not entirely sure. My parents wouldn't want. My parents, the olds wouldn't want to hear that. Nor would my uh, <laughs> my missus' parents want to hear that. We're not sure when we're coming back exactly. <laughs> That's cool though. That it's um that you've had so many sort of offers. And I was that a tough decision for you around who to go with? Because I could imagine every casino in the world was trying to. I would I would say near on not just casino near on every sports book, maybe every sports book casino in the world, if not very close to, has yeah. reached out and wanted to team up in some way, shape, form. So um, used to be real taboo like partnering with them. I don't know why, like we all, we all love a punt, you know, a lot of us responsibly, of course, maybe the select few, you know, make it, I guess, have it in that gray area, but yeah. So I don't know. I've worked hard. I've put everything on the line and to be able to end up with a partnership out of it, that's going to, I don't know, allow me to create something and, and change my lifestyle a little bit. Yeah. It's good. I think. Yeah. Perfect. Was the decision hard to go with the one that you've chosen? Not in the end, no. There was a lot of a lot of good offers, but these guys, I I would tell you who they are if I could, but I'd I just until they announce it themselves, I'm kind of got to sit on my hands, but it won't be far. But yeah, they uh, they are allowing to, me to do some really really innovative stuff. Probably not quite seen in like the the uh, the gambling sphere. Oh, so wow. really exciting, yeah, yeah. Which is going to be pretty cool. Some real exciting social stuff um community driven stuff as well where i don't know we can all like have a have a bit of a punt and enjoy uh enjoy the ride together but that's cool. i won't dive too deep into it i'll say something i'm supposed to <laughs> fair enough yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like you're going to be opening a book for um show jumping by the sounds of all this it's going to, you're going to change oh, the gee, game yeah, that'll be, the, be the first port of call <laughs> let, let me create the odds as well i'll be judge jury and executioner <laughs> <laughs> why not oh so then you've start you started your um blackjack journey you went on a hot streak to start basically started your kitty yep you've had a few losses um but more wins than not so this whole yes. ride has just been absolutely incredible it's just been lucky yeah so we won seven of the first 10 days obviously not seven in a row but seven yeah. of the first 10 days and then it's just been off to the races since so yeah it's a lot of people can't like who are like starting to follow or joining the journey now they come in and they see what the bet's at and they're like oh this bastard must be like he must have a hundred million dollars he must be a billionaire <laughs> who's like who can bet this much yeah. but they don't they're not aware that it started with a 1500 dollars punt and it's just been like if we'd lost if we'd lost seven of the first 10 there probably there would have never been a adventures of tin tin yeah. in a long you know, <laughs> lasting series i would have had to put a put a fork in it a long time ago so it's just the way it's worked out like timing just timing just timing the stars timing. aligned and it's just been oh so incredible and you mentioned uh other people i guess people's comments was was that a thing at the start for you around uh negative feedback around what you're doing here or the haters there's always Honestly. haters and successful people but uh, there is there's a lot there's getting getting to be a lot of haters like percentage wise of everyone on board the haters are actually quite low it's i would say it's unusual how positive the whole thing's been especially given like this the, the industry we're working with in here like we're talking gambling which is can be quite taboo for a lot of people yeah um it has been overwhelmingly positive you're always going to get negative stuff like you're all oh, fake money or oh this is boy oh, you're a scam artist like whatever i don't really care like people yeah. people are entitled to think whatever they want to think it doesn't really worry me like i know what's going on like i know it's real i'll have a hell of a good time that's the main thing but yeah it has been overwhelmingly positive which you just don't see a lot of 
on social media these days. No, so, I know. I'm, it's, it's I'm a surprised. Of, a bit of a community sort of aspect going to it now. Yeah, well, a massive community, to be fair. One million yeah. people um, by the time this is released will be following you. And um, geez, that's an incredible <laughs> amount of people and some well, high-profile yeah. um, people in there as well. You've mentioned a lot of athletes, um, but some huge-name athletes as well. Yeah, Kelly Slater. Oh. All aboard! Like, <laughs> so, remember the first time I saw that? I nearly like nearly fell out of my seat. Like, what is this bloke doing in here? <laughs> it's so funny. Like, and some of the people, not just athletes. Like, I'm happy naming like people who have publicly commented on them or shared them or whatever, right? Because they're obviously happy being attached. But like, some of the people I've had DMs from um, who I don't name them if it's just private messages. But like, you just would not expect them to have an interest in gambling at a degenerate level. It's so it's really surprising, but they love it. Yeah. They absolutely love it. Like the 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 messages of positivity and stuff on them. It's it's unreal. They just I think everyone just I think at this point everyone just wants to see someone get a win over the bookie over the casino. One one for the uh, one for the battler. Hundred percent. Everyone loves the bookies to be burnt, and watching yep. you do it. Oh. Brings absolute joy to everyone's morning. I know when I turn up to work, it's pop often the first thing a lot of the guys will say to me, did you see yeah. the video this morning? No spoilers, but what a what a clip or what a video this morning to Good. start the day. So you bring in fizz to everyone. Good. The only problem I have with the ones here in Vegas is I have to take some of the fizz off because you can't not let us <laughs> wear in there for starters, which really sucks. That doesn't bid well for me because, oh, it's not good. And then like, oh, you got to keep your voice down and all the stuff. So like, I can't, I've got to really like restrict myself when I'm on the actual <laughs> felt um, in Vegas, but it takes away from it a little bit, I think, but it's still a lot of fun. It's still get the old butterflies kicking and yeah, there's still just as much on the line. I just can't yell and charhu as much, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah, what what's your prep like um, leading into it? Have you got like routines or same time? What's your sort of daily yeah. ritual? Norm- normally, chuck on a bit of duff duff and start doing a few laps around the apartment for about fifteen to twenty minutes. Um, yeah, I'll, no- I'll normally do it after a gym session when I've got the endorphins running kind of high. I'll get back and throw some music on. Literally, I'll literally, I will actually pace around the apartment a couple of times. It'll be, it'll be freaking hilarious for like one of my neighbors or one of our across the way to, to look in and see what's going on. And then, yeah, get in the throne and just, I don't know, just bang, 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 fire it out. How's the heart rate? Does that spike? Is it, when's it at its worst? I was talking to the, the missile today. I should probably get a, um, use your heart rate watch thing for tomorrow's hand or something and and see just how high it spikes because it's definitely getting up and then for like for a long time after it's 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 humming yeah 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 and i guess the dealing with that whole emotional roller coaster as well like after when that like you say that massive endorphin hit where you're absolutely yeah. buzzing for probably at least a couple of hours afterwards and hours then, yeah, yeah. Hours. And then that disappointment when you've <laughs> the despair. Despair, when you've had a loss. Uh, how do you deal with that? Yeah, it's someone was saying that the other day, or I, well, I saw a comment of someone, and they're like, "How do you move on from a loss so quickly?" I was like, well, "No, you're just seeing a sixty second reel. <laughs> you see the bit where I go, oh shit, see you tomorrow. We've been doing more. What you don't see is the half hour of me doing this, just staring <laughs> blankly at the computer after going, oh, <laughs> god damn it, but." It's, I'm, I sit in there, I sit down every day fully prepared to lose what's on the line. It's getting to a, a level now where it's, we definitely look at exit strategies or whatever. Um, I don't know. I started this man, the Millie thing as a bit of a joke. And then it was kind of like, well, this might be feasible um to get to a million and profit from it but you wouldn't you wouldn't you know stake your life on it because we could take a losing streak real quickly and then i thought well can i get it to 100 days but geez another <laughs> 26 days bidding six figures a day is just oh, i don't know if that's going to be i don't know if it's going to be doable i do have a i've got a firm bottom line where I'll, i'm going to leave it with profit there's no doubt about it um but yeah it's just hell how long we can prolong it from here, I suppose. Long may she continue. <laughs> what is the firm bottom line? Um, at the moment, 300. Oh, yeah. So yeah. What's, what are you on at the moment? 570? Uh, it was 570, yeah. Yeah, okay. And you'd stop at a million if it went that way? I think I'd have to. Like, yeah. it's, such a, it's such a nice milestone number. Like, what a ride. Um, I just, I think I would have to. Yeah. yeah. Or like, 100 be, days. Or a hundred days, but I imagine, given the size of them, 
I think the firm bottom line or the million would come before 100 days. We would have to be, it would have to be win loss, win loss, win loss. Maybe it could go 2 1, 1 2 for a couple to stay in there. But yeah, yeah otherwise, I think we'll hit one of those. Uh, we'll hit the ceiling or the roof yeah. before 100 days, I think. And you'd be happy to walk away with 300 profit. I, I'd be happy. No, knowing that I've got um, this partnership going forward, if if I hadn't sort of, if nothing like that was on the table, then I think I would have called it at like 500 or around there. Like, But I think that because I've got something that I can earn, you know, a bit of dosh off going forward yeah. for, I, I don't know, um, what sort of length of future that's got in it, but at least it should last a little while. You know, I'm happy to, for the sake of, Growing it, growing the community even further, and keeping the movement going. I um prepared to put a bit on the line down to that point, but at the same time, like I reckon, if we got up to eight hundred, the floor would probably come up to four hundred. Yeah, you know, type thing as well. Like, yeah, it, it it can change, but that is as as uh, as we talk right now, that is the firm firm bottom. How good. 300,000 from 1500. I kind of feel like an asshole <laughs> talking about it or like saying it aloud all the time because like it does feel like a real boastful thing but it, then simultaneously like I'm I'm literally logging it on my account every day so I can't hide from it like yeah I've got to be open about where we're at like yeah so it is uh, I'm very lucky yeah it is it's a substantial amount. Yeah did you think about potentially a casino company buying that money off you or giving you sort of that money to bet through them? I'm sure those over offers were available. Oh, there are plenty, plenty of offers, plenty of offers for them to do that. Like, it wouldn't be hard to find any casino in the world to start staking that action if you wanted to for yeah. the content. But I don't think it'd be, I don't think I'd be able to do the content genuinely. Yeah, that's if true. there's nothing lost, nothing gained. Yeah, I just yeah, the, there's been no shortage of offers to to run it that way. Um, but I just, I, yeah, I don't think I could do it properly. Yeah. That's true, because mate, you're you really wear your emotions. Yeah, you can tell what it means to you. Every, well, this is what you get. It's <laughs> every pretty, pretty raw. <laughs> oh yeah. Do you do much prep before a hand? Um, like like uh, in which respect? Like you've got some incredible one liners. They're calling you the honey badger of um, <laughs> casino well, gambling. Someone asked me this. The only line that I've actually had down that I wanted to use the entire series was the. Uh, onto a jellyfish <laughs> i remember my old boss used to say that oh that's an absolute ripper but even still i was like i don't know when to use it it's gonna have to be the right time because if i i reckon if i tried like planning what yeah. to say well it might not fit the moment so it would just be too hard mm. so generally i just sit down there look look at the dealer an insult normally comes to mind pretty <laughs> pretty quickly because they all got a particular look about them <laughs> poor bastards just getting roasted without even knowing it um and then away you go it's just got to be in the moment otherwise it kind of i yeah. don't yeah it's just too hard to to pull them out at the right time the, yeah. the moment might not suit mate you're, you're quick on it like i guess it, have you ever thought about commentary or i think you'd be a great race caller you'd be great rugby commentator just the, I wanted to, the energy you i bring. wanted to be a uh, a racing commentator when i was a kid i remember like on the old uh square pcs back in the day the olds had this i don't know there's this horse racing game and you could like control the horses or you could pick simulation and i just used to always pick the stimulation um, mode where it raced them for you but i'd <laughs> jot down all the names of the horses and i'd commentate the race <laughs> like that was my fun not playing like the actual game just commentating the race so that's for a long time i did want to do something like that but yeah. it hasn't transpired you know but um yeah, there definitely was an element of that, me wanting to do something in that field. I still would love to end up in racing media somehow one day to some extent, but for now it's it's blackjack. Yeah, from this platform, I guess a lot of these sort of opportunities will will come to you like that now. Like I'm sure any racing industry will be keen to get you calling or um, at least doing preview type um, shows. I would just love to. I would just love my job to be watching the races. Yeah, interview and analysis, all that sort of carry on. I'd, geez, I'd, I wouldn't want to follow in the footsteps of someone like Maddie Hill um, calling uh, calling races. He set the bar too high, but or Tony Lee. But um, yeah, definitely something in that field. Just presenting or talking. I don't know. You've got a face for radio, which doesn't help as far <laughs> as uh, on camera talent goes for for that racing stuff. But but put a bit of lipstick on the pig, and we'd be right. I look forward to hearing your calls one day. Um, down the straight of a New Zealand carp or oh, who knows it's gonna I'll, be... I'll have to mind me F's and C's I don't know how <laughs> they'll need to see that. the censorship guy's going to have to be pretty dialed in alternative commentary <laughs> yeah it's going to have to be the year with the ACC of uh, racehorse calling yeah <laughs> Well, I guess one thing with a lot, a lot of, um, especially high stakes gamblers, the thing they lose is value for money, and 
Um, when you're punting over $100,000 on one hand of blackjack, very hard to keep that value of money um, for everyday life things possible, well, isn't it? So how have you found it's that? It's lost on me. But yeah, it's not lost on me at all. Still flu economy down here, mate. Don't you worry. Although the <laughs> casino has put us up in a pretty swanky room here, which is in no way, shape, form would I be paying for this bloody thing. Um, <laughs> it's not lost on me because essentially – I've been really good at just leaving like that. That's the blackjack thing because yeah. of how it's worked out. Like if I bet on the ponies or whatever on the weekend, like just gone or whatever, the size of my typical bet hasn't changed one bit. Um, nothing like that's changed. I'm still putting on 20 leg, $50 multis, chasing the dream <laughs> like every other bloke. Like no, nothing's gone, you know, out of control. The only thing I might splurge on soon, I think, is uh, I might buy myself a, a share into another race or so that's about it. But otherwise, uh, nah, just we're traveling a little bit, but yeah, I don't, um, yeah, still, still the same bloke, but the, uh, same mindset as far as that all goes. No $600 Gucci, uh, Gucci t-shirts on me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just a 10, 10, one, but how good that's, that's even more valuable. Yeah. 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 Priceless. Priceless. <laughs> how did that start? Not even by me, just because of my accent. <laughs> um, all the Americans who started jumping on board, just the way I say 10. It sounds like tin yeah. for them, I guess. So um, they started calling it. They started calling me Mister Tintin, and then I was like, "Oh, well, added the adventures of Tintin," and then it just <laughs> morphed into this, this massive thing now. And now there's merch for it, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Did you set up the merch, or was that done through someone no, else I just approached you? Um, Uncle uh, had a few different outfits reaching out, but Uncle Rico were pretty good and offered a pretty good deal. And because I'm in, because I'm in Canada and I didn't even know where to operate it out of, they've got, they, you know, the manufacturers, the distribution, marketing tools and all that. It seemed a lot easier to just go into partnership and take like a royalty than, um, yeah. than to go and start creating it myself. I've, I, I would, I don't envy anyone passing up all those packages. So. And the hat, talk to me about the hat. Everyone loves a good Legionnaire hat. Oh, the Black Flaps cap. Mm. That's actually a um, that's a uh, Mr. Vintage staple from the ACC. I think they did it in partnership with Mr. Vintage when the ACC uh, created them. I've had that for some time. Um, the boys and myself we used to do a Boxing Day test every year. Oh. And uh, I was uh, we had the white team and the black team, and I was cast into the black team. So part of the mandatory uniform was a uh, Black Flaps cap. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's, that's how that stuck about. And then... I don't know. Just thought it'd be a great idea to chuck it on while doing some of the um the daily blackjack hands, and people loved it. People loved it. We're normalising the Legionnaires hat, <laughs> the mud flaps cap. So good. How'd you go at cricket? Terrible. Did ya? Absolutely terrible. Terrible. Couldn't bat. Couldn't bowl. Barely fielded. But I could drink. <laughs> but I could drink out there. <laughs> give me a give me a staunchy. Give me a long neck out there, and I'm your guy. <laughs> but I was just, just commentating from the field. <laughs> Yeah, just uh, just sledging and ripping the piss, but with <laughs> with battle ball in hand, absolutely useless. Oh, so good. Okay, so the plans plans post this. Yep. What's yep. going to be next for you? You, you think? Uh, I suppose I've I've got some with this partnership I'm doing. I've got some really cool social promotional things to run, which will keep me in the forefront. Doing some similar stuff in the gambling sphere publicly, you know, daily content and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'll probably end up um like streaming some online punts and stuff as well. And then have met, have actually been reached out to from a few different um, racing media outlets. Oh, yeah. So I'll look to dip my toe into doing some of that stuff. New Zealand or Canada or where would that sort of be? All Australian so far. Oh, Australian. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I shame I shamelessly plugged it the other day. I was talking to this uh this guy this bloke Fraser, Kiwi yeah. bloke, he's doing this ten thousand dreams project. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And um I was talking to him and sort of got to oh where would you like to end up? And I just shamelessly said, oh, I would love a racing media job one day. <laughs> and then I didn't expect him to follow up and ask exactly who I wanted to be with him. And he did. And I was like, well, I'll ra I love racing.com um, in Australia, a bit unpatriotic, but, you know, covering the Melbourne Cup and, and the Spring Carnival would be pretty epic. And then didn't realize within 24 hours I would have had any correspondence from a few different um, racing jurisdictions. So maybe I can end up uh, deviating something into that. but. Uh, yeah, and and of course I'll still be punting to to some extent going forward. That's not going to change. Far out, so cool. Eh? The the power of what's what's sort of eventuated for you. Just like seventy days going well at blackjack, and now like almost the world's your oyster. Well, 
my old man used to always say to me, like whenever I was leaving the house to go out to the pub or whatever on a Friday, Saturday, he'd always say, oh, now be careful out there. No good can come from sitting around talking piss at the pub. Yeah. And, like it hasn't been at the pub, but I've just been talking shit, playing blackjack <laughs> online and it has opened I, it's opened up some opportunities, which is, is crazy. And again, I just, I've got to stipulate it again. It's not a rational or logical path that anybody should try and replicate mm. because it's just, yeah, it's an. It's, I'm definitely an anomaly, a massive outlier. I think how many kids obviously watch your journey and think that is the absolute dream, Tim. Don't do it, kids. kids. <laughs> do you get messages from the people? Um, I guess the gambling communities around what impact you potentially are having on punters. Yep, yep, yep. So I, that's why, I like, and I will continue to like always. People are probably going to get sick of it, especially with me um, forging an official partnership with a gambling entity. Some people might end up feeling like I'm ramming it down their throats, responsible gambling, but I genuinely do mean it. Like, bet within your means. Like, if you're losing sleep at night, you're betting too much and that sort of carry on. Like, at the end of the day, it's for fun. So yeah. if you're not having fun, then you'll be on your means. But there's been a few reach out, and I've had some people reach out saying, oh, you know, have you thought about the implications you are having on, like, like especially young lads who may be watching this. And of course, it's always on my mind, which is why I'll continue to tell them like what I'm doing is not standard procedure. You're not seeing, and you're also just seeing a tiny snippet of my actual overall gambling online, which this snippet snippet just happens to be going good. If I could show you my, uh, uh, my bet slips from the horses I backed on the weekend, <laughs> definitely not so good. Um, so yeah, I'm always forever mindful of of getting that message across. It doesn't matter how often I get that message across. People will still have an issue with it. Um, that's just the way the world works, unfortunately. Um, people will, you know, if it's something that people don't understand or gambling is one of those things, like if if you've never gotten around it, if you've never laid a bet in your life or, or you've never grown up in a family where anyone's gambled or anything, you're going to look at it and think, well, just what an enormous waste of money, like... Mm. And I, I understand where they're coming from, but uh, yeah, at the end of the day, I'll continue to push the message and hopefully we're all just having fun. Oh, that's it. Like, and ever, a lot of people are having fun through you without even. Uh, yeah, even yeah. better. Even better. Just watch and don't ever let me out again. Just keep watching. Just watch. <laughs> we can watch you um, go through the emotions of uh, a punter. Yes. Yeah. You, you, I, you, you can, can ride the highs and lows with me. me. It'll be, I'm sure it'll be nearly just as draining for some of you watching what I'm doing as, yeah, as it is actually for me, no doubt. Yeah. Oh, mate, you have done such a good job. We have gone to our Instagram for some questions. Oh, plenty have come in. Oh, you are a pop- Some of the lads will have gotten here for sure, I guarantee it. There's a few of your lads potentially, but a lot of similar questions. Big, Obviously, the big one was, was around the exit point. A lot, a lot of people want you to take money home out of this. Um, and there's a lot of people who want you to <laughs> potentially not and, and and never want you to um, stop it because this is their life. So we had yeah. two sort of themes running through there and a lot of messages came in around the size of your genitals. Um, many. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be very <laughs> underwhelmed. <laughs> many, well, this one, this was an example. How does it feel to have your balls touch the water every time you sit on the toilet? Like, Plenty like that. <laughs> I'm all foreskin and no shaft. I wouldn't know. Uh, and this one, um, ask Tim Nicky if he's ever teabagged a $20,000 lady's handbag. If he says no, he's lying. <laughs> you bastard, I know who exactly who that's from. And my, uh, my answer is no comment. <laughs> oh, you prick. <laughs> Oh, the size of it was a good day, though. (laughs) Oh, well, if it did happen, I imagine it would have been a good day. (laughs) It would have crushed your handbag. (laughs) Oh, that's so funny. That's so funny. Yeah. Jeez. I do remember that. (laughs) No comment. Okay. This one. Do you still have your shin pads from your first 15 trial? Oh, Rousey. That's come from Rousey. I know. Straight away. That's so funny because he did actually go to an intermediate school. We went to different um, intermediates, but uh, same, same town. And he did actually try out for the um, Hara Intermediate First 15, uh, and he turned up with shin pads for the uh, for the rugby First 15. So it wasn't you. He's just swung. No, I know. He's trying to turn one on me oh, there because it's, it's well known that he actually turned up to trial with shin pads on. Cameron, the powerhouse Rouse. I probably shouldn't name him, but too late now. <laughs> oh, that's... Oh, 
disappointed. I was hoping you wore shin pads on your first 15 No, try. no, oh. not quite, not quite. Okay, next one. Does your strategy stay the same regardless of the bet size? 100%. Yep, I've been seeing a lot of that um, more recently, particularly one the other day where I, I pulled 16 versus dealer. I think it was it was dealer 7 or 8, and uh, I hit, got a 5, miraculous. We hit 21 and we win. And a lot of the comments were saying, like, that's crazy that you'd hit given the stakes, but the stakes don't matter, right? There's a there's a statistical statistically best way to play each hand given on what you've got versus what the dealer's got. You've got a best possible outcome um, and odds of getting to it. So just yeah, blackjack's a game of statistics, a game of math, and it, you do not deviate regardless of the size of your stake. It remains the same. Yep, always. How much time have you got to make your decision? Uh, with those online ones, I think it's 45 seconds, but I'm normally pretty quick with it. I've mm. played enough now to know. There's the odd one that trips me up. There was part of one of today's trip me up a little bit. I wasn't quite sure which way to go about it, but you'll see that in due course. But yeah, I, I actually don't know at the land base here how long you'd have. I mean, you certainly can't go fix a cup of tea and, and come back and, you know, yeah. dawdle on it. But I don't know how long. I don't know how long before the pit boss would say, right, oh, mate, make a call. Yeah, not sure. Oh, interesting. Because obviously, like, there's, I remember one maybe 10 hands ago where you, you look back on it and you thought, man, I played that wrong. I oh, should. Big time. And was that just a spirit of the moment thing? Yeah. You, your yep. adrenaline's pumping. You, you just oh, oversee I mean, something. I messed up enormously. Yeah, adrenaline pumping and. I think I, I pulled a really low hand and then I hit and it took me to it took me to a twelve versus a dealer six, which it, when a dealer shines six, basically you just always stand because the odds of them going like getting two cards that bust them is so high. That's like the dream result to see dealer six showing. Um and I hit on twelve versus their six, which is really dumb. Really, really dumb. And got a nine, which ended up making me win. Um Again, just another display of dumb luck and timing because that's the only, I believe that's the only official blunder I've made through the entire series. The only time I've played a hand wrong, um, with the exception of a few times where I didn't have the funds to double down and should have. But yeah, that's the only time I've hit or stood where I shouldn't have and got away with it. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was dumb. I watch you and, you and you're so quick with it around what numbers you need. And um, you always seem to be making the right call, like, like you've said. How have you got to that point? Obviously, you played a lot of hands, but did you have you gone through the mathematics of it all or have you done a course or anything like that? I've, I've played um, I've played a lot of blackjack. These, you can, like, if you Google online, you'll probably find some uh, some sketchy sites in the meantime <laughs> trying to take advantage of you. But you can find tables of exactly how to play. It'll show you um, basically all the different outcomes of your two cards, your two face-up cards on one side, um, and it'll show you exactly what to do against every different face card the dealer shine so you can study those um and then just put them into action real quick so i i've definitely looked at those um years ago you know when i was first starting to really get into the game and then now just playing a lot of blackjack yeah how many hands would you play a day other than the the big one zero zero, zero. just one hand a day ever literally. since i started this Fair. or there was a couple of days early on where i played a couple more and, I, and they were going terribly and I was like, why don't I just, one's working. Why don't I just stick with one? This is like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. So I just stuck with one and I I have not deviated since. Today's the first time I've deviated and I don't love the idea of having to play more than the one hand because yeah. the one hand has been, I'm like a lot of gamblers or athletes, not that I'm an athlete in any way by playing you magic. Are, but mate, like, you are, mate, you are. You know, you have your superstitions and my superstition has Growing exponentially the whole way through this because one hands, one and done's been working an absolute treat. And now all of a sudden I got here today and I had to play six hands and I was flustered. And <laughs> yeah, you're you're gonna see the end result. But yeah, just it's I don't like deviating from from what's working really well. I don't yeah. think anyone in my position would, you know. Nah. So there's a lot of people saying, like, how can you not get more money on? Like everyone talks about Vegas being the punting paradise yep. where you could bet unlimited amount of money or but you can't obviously no common misconception yeah so basically the the table the, the single max amount you can put on a blackjack hand on, on one hand is ten thousand usd that's basically around the entire city here there may be the odd 
No, I don't even think Bellagio and Wynn and the likes do. But you, what you can get is you can get consent for the pit boss or the table to raise that for you personally. Uh, if you, so for instance, here at Red Rock, if you want them to raise it from ten thousand USD per hand to twenty, you have to uh, you have to wire them half a million USD just to have here on the books with them for them to uh, go and raise it for you. Far which out. half a million USD is substantially more than what our current running profit is at. So yeah, yeah I was, wasn't going to go and do that. And then, yeah. And then he run, it was weird. Everyone just was telling me, Oh, ring Dana White. He'll help you out. Ring Dana. Well, for starters, Dana White's not waiting for some freaking <laughs> Kiwi idiot to ring him, ring him up because he wants to do one hand of blackjack a day. It doesn't work like that. And even too, like Dana White's, his max here is 30,000 USD. Oh, really? And I mean, that guy's got, he has a massive, yeah, I was talking to the, uh, my host here when he was helping us, you know, set up and stuff. And like, he has a, a massive line of credit here, but still his max is 30,000. Far out. Interesting. Yeah, just, eh? And it's the same all around the city. Like you do think oh, if you've got the money to spend, they'll take it, but they really won't. And the, the, the biggest factor for me on top again and why no one would ever raise it for me is because I'm one and done. And so casinos don't like that, that regardless of the result, say if I put a hundred thousand dollar hand on, I win, I'm leaving. Whereas like they get these super wealthy businessmen who come, they might, if they might have the funds to do hundred thousand dollar hands, but they're going to play for a long time. And the house knows that with yeah. their house edge, they'll likely get it back. Yeah. Mate, that's fascinating. And I guess the people would have said, what about like um, going to an underground type, set up, you know, like a, a Molly's game or something like that. <laughs> I would love to find my, I would love to be a fly on the wall in one of those rooms just for the sake of it. Mate, you'd have entry now, I reckon. You've got that I much wonder, I still wonder if they'd be letting you. Do one and oh, done. Yeah. No, they definitely, no, yeah, I think one and done would be the problem. They, You're probably right. There probably would be outfits like that letting you do high, high stakes. But I think it's just the one and done thing that's a problem. Yeah, I'd I'd I'd, I'd play my one win, and then they'd have me by the scruff of the neck, saying, "You ain't going anywhere, boy. <laughs> no one knows you're here. Yeah. No one knows you're here." <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I think you should probably made the right decision. <laughs> for now, yeah, certainly for now. <laughs> okay, next question. Geez, that one deviated. That's good stuff. Okay, ask him about the time he won two hundred and fifty k on a lads trip in Aussie. Now this must have been one of the greats. Online online slots. Online slots, 250K. Yeah. Far out. Yeah, that was pretty – that's the biggest win I've ever had in my life, which obviously was a big um, starting point for me, you know, willing to, like, put a bit on the line to do this. Yeah. Yeah. So to start this – that was in, like, mid-January. This then, year. This year. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. And then all of a sudden, that's why – and then I was like, oh – and then, like – Within like a week or so, I had the idea for this blackjack thing, yeah. and then I was like, "Oh, just February first seems like a nice day to start it." So I waited, but yeah, that that definitely was like it put the mind at ease. Like starting with a fifteen hundred dollar hand, knowing, "Well, whoa, well, if it goes bad for three or four days, so be it." But far out. Oh, that's yeah. cool. What we what we uh, spins on that to win that? That's a huge win. Uh, shit, I don't even remember what size the bit was. It was big. Um. Maybe two hundred. Oh yeah, a spin. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, that was one of those things where like started with a low balance and like because I'm never like Build up depositing. The house money. I'm I would I ne would never ever um like deposit and start betting that amount. Yeah. Right? Like if I put was to put into an online casino, like it's two like I'll do a two thousand dollar deposit. Yeah. And then which is still a lot of money, still a lot of money, and then try and you know like hopefully you work it up so like that's all just come from one of those yeah i've heard stories of guys who have put a legendary one someone um deposited fifty dollars and end up pulling over a million dollars out sounds like yeah, a story of yourself <laughs> no god jeez i wish i wish mate i'd be in the cayman islands on on a yacht if i if that was me yeah no fifty dollars into into i think it was 1.4 million or something outrageous like that oh, yeah wow well, the stories that get told for the generations, that's one of them. And I think yours is going to be one of them, obviously, this this whole Blackjack um, story, which who knows where this is. This could finish at $10 million. We We do not know. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine. Well, for, fortunately for me, you cannot do a, a, a million-dollar uh, Blackjack hand on online or anywhere in the world for that matter. What's the most you could do? You can do 200000 200, is, And it's at the top yeah. in the world. I don't. I, that's kind of – that's – that's a bit too daunting to even think about to, or <laughs> contemplate at the minute. Yeah. yeah. Okay, next one. Slaps or ponies? You can only choose one for the rest of your life. Ponies. 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 Love the sport. 
Love it far too much. Yeah. But got to be the ponies. Watching one just sitting on them, coming for home, you know. Oh, There's no greater yeah. feeling. And there's no worse feeling than one of your best mates <laughs> is over your shoulder saying you're home here, 200 out, just for you to get pipped on the line. <laughs> Step up a cuts all around when they do that. But to, the, to anyone listening, if you're the kind of person who says you're home when your mate's got a fair old chunk riding on the leader, 200 out, oh, oh give, just a, give, give yourself a good stiff uppercut. <laughs> Nothing worse. The early bones was always the call. Oh, early yeah. bones. Nah, I can't give you early bones till it's home. Oh, so good. But I remember one of your um, first videos, which probably um, might, I know you don't like the word viral, but went pretty good, um, was you talking around what not to say to a punter or, or something along those oh, lines. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, five things not to say to your mate when they're getting on the way. And that's number classic. one. <laughs> yeah. And then you did an All Blacks one for the World Cup, the emotional roller coaster. See, you're dabbling in a bit of content before this well, all sort of started. So that's how it, that's how it got to um, – yeah, because that's what someone asked me the other day. How were you already at 15,000 followers for the first bit? Yeah, it just started from some of those like – like some of that comedy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Which managed to, I guess, got to 15,000. And then um, I think it was like, I think it did a 1500 a little bit two days in a row. There was zero growth. And then day three was a few hundred. And then day four, I woke up and was like, holy shit. <laughs> um, You're in the algorithm. Yeah, we're off now. to the races, <laughs> yeah. so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Saddle so up, son. And comedy, have you, have you done much comedy? Like, or was nah. that? Nah, just. Nah, not at all. Just I was just the same as what you had sat at the park. I was just in Canada with a bit of with a spare bit of spare time on my hands. And, oh, this could be a bit of a gag. Yeah. Oh, how good. Okay, two, oh, three more. Do you think Bigfoot has a human slug or a red rocket? Red rocket, red rocket all day. He's got the Mrs. <laughs> lipstick hanging between there for sure. The old Maybelline <laughs> dipping between his thighs. You've obviously thought about that one before. That was too red way rocket, too fast. Rocket. I think this one's come up amongst some people on the piss before. Do you think he's got a red rocket? I don't know why, but it's definitely a conversation I have had with people before. It's, it's, and someone was way into the debate as well, yeah. not me. <laughs> yeah. You're very confident though. Bigfoot very. has a red rocket for sure. Even if you don't know something, just say it confidently and people will believe you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's true. Okay, two more. Best blackjack tip. Ooh, best blackjack tip. Don't play side bets. Side bets are for mugs. Oh, yeah. And people people love me to play them. I'll tell you, there's a reason why side bets exist. It's because it helps the casino play to their edge. Anything that exists on that table plays into the casino's hand over the long run. So side bets are a mugs game on the blackjack table. That is good advice. But you, you often still do a little one. Oh, I, I'm, a, I'm just a, I'm a sucker to peer pressure. And because this... Uh, <laughs> Every now and again, I put a vote up. Every time I put a poll up asking for a vote, they all vote for it. We haven't landed one in ages now. There was one day that I didn't have a side bet on, and it did pay. I got, I think I got, a, I got um, coloured fours, and the dealer got a four as well. So like that side bet would pay a lot, trip fours. But yeah, oh, they, geez, they were calling for my head. The series was nearly over. They want to be gone. But otherwise, they are nonsensical. Just play the button. And uh, that's your best. That's your best. Uh, play the button. Play proper blackjack. Play smart. And that's the best way to go. Oh, that is good advice from the greatest blackjack player of our generation. Okay, last piece of advice. This is a piece of advice for a Woodlad listener. The best piece of advice you have. Oh, the best piece of advice I have. Yeah. Oh, that's heavy. That is heavy. That is heavy. That is heavy. Um. Hmm. Jeez, where would I go with that? How philosophical do I want to be? <laughs> because some of the best advice I got was that you've got your entire life uh, to make money in regards to working. Just go and live. Like, don't bog yourself down into oh, worrying about 70 year old use problems when you're 20, 22 years old, you know? Like, just actually enjoy yourself. And I know that's kind of a contradiction because you still need money to travel and do all those things, but you just don't bog yourself down. Love it, mate. Yeah. That is powerful, especially coming from you. You're living proof you can do it. 
You've had a bit well, of luck. Just, but. Yeah, it, it's worked for me. But even if this blackjack thing hadn't worked and like, and we'd taken this time off, you know, from, um, away from being on the farm and home and, and I'd torch, you know, if it, we'd sold up and, and if I'd spent a lot of money and we went home with not a lot, I would have absolutely no regrets for what we've seen in the world and, um, everything we've been able to do and see over here. Yeah. I would, wouldn't have changed a thing. If the blackjack profits and the followers were non existent tomorrow, then I would still have the exact same advice. Mm, mate, spoken. Like a true lad, true legend. Actually, I just saw one more question I missed. This will be tough for you. All Blacks, Warriors, or the Taranaki Bulls? Who are you supporting? (laughs) This has got three of your heartstrings all on one, I believe. Oh, geez, the Bulls were good last year, weren't they? Um, Glory years. Oh, shit. That hurts. Who am I going to upset the most here? (laughs) Who do I stand to upset the most? Um... Oh, they give me Naki up the waz. Oh, up the waz. Jeez. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, you've got your hat on and you're, you're a true waz supporter. So, um, mate, up the waz. Yeah, mate. Love your work. But appreciate you coming on the podcast, mate. It's been an absolute journey that you've been on. I've loved following it. I feel like I've, I've known you for years, even though it's the first time we've met. Yeah. But <laughs> no, it's great. Hey, it's, it's be good shooting the shit, man, and thanks for having me on so much. It's been a pleasure. Mate, you're a true legend and absolute lad. Cheers.